in the general election, transitioning kids as young as two and three years old, be a, it's a it's a quite going to be quite a hurdle to get over it for him, um, as it will be for any Republican, actually. There have been reports online about hospitals in North Carolina that are transitioning toddlers. These are the reports. And um, now the hospitals are denying it, except that the denial is not exactly a denial. And as always with the media, the reports are surfacing that there are some of these hospitals in North Carolina where they're transitioning kids as young as two and three years old. Media doesn't report on that. But then once they get the denial, then they report about the denial. They don't report on the original claim, the original thing. They report only on the, den the denial. So this is uh, Newsweek. Claims that three medical schools in North Carolina are offering gender transition treatments for toddlers have provoked outrage on social media. But two of these sc those schools uh, told Newsweek that the claims simply aren't true. In a post earlier this week by the North Carolina chapter of the Education First Alliance, which professes to help conservative candidates around the country dedicated to the pro-American, pro-parent ideals, contended that Duke University School of Medicine, the University of North Carolina School of Medicine, and East Carolina University School of Medicine were accepting toddlers as patients for starting gender transitions. Transgender uh, rights and the sorts of care afforded to minors are proving to be deeply polarizing in the issues in the US, uh, et cetera, and so forth. Um, Let's get to this denial. Education First Alliance reported, quote, top medical schools in the state are now transitioning toddlers. These doctors and clinics know that by catching children and their families at two or three, they can generate enormous amounts of cash because patients will likely rely on a lifetime of medication. Spokesperson for ECU Health told Newsweek was extremely concerned by the escalating rhetoric and threats aimed at team members and medical prov providers in recent days, and especially given those comments are a result of misinformation. They added, quote, ECU Health does not offer gender-affirming surgery to, to minors, nor does the health system offer gender-affirming transition care to toddlers. In a statement, uh, officials at the Duke School of Medicine said, online misinformation about toddlers starting gender transitions at Duke is false. Care decisions are made by patients, families, and their providers, and are both age-appropriate and adherent to national and international guidelines. Uh, much of the online outrage centers on the Education First Alliance's claim that one of the doctors it, it uh, mentions would see a two-year-old girl play with a toy truck and then begin treatment for gender dysphoria, for which it did not provide evidence. Reacting to the claims, Gays Against Groomers, which describes itself as an organization of gays against the sexualization of children, wrote, quote, how dare anyone tell young children, toddlers, that if they're a girl and like playing with trucks or a boy and like playing with Barbies, they were born in the wrong body. Um, so that's the claim. Denial from the hospitals. What's the actual reality? Um, well, the reality is that these claims are are true. Um, transitioning minors. This is this is this is standard practice, and even toddlers. It is standard practice. Now, there are a few a few details that are important. To keep in mind. First, you you will often hear the, the, these uh, hospitals and medical establishments deny that they're performing gender transition surgeries on minors. And even that is very often just a bald-faced lie because there are actual surgeries that are being performed on minors. This, this, this happens all the time, in fact. Gen, quote, unquote, gender-affirming uh, double mastectomies, very common. And uh, they happen to minors, girls as young as 15, 14, 15 years old in some cases. So the surgeries are happening. And when you hear these denials, oftentimes it's just a lie. But yeah, there, there are plenty of other cases where, where okay, they, they don't do the surgeries to minors. They, they wait till they wait till the person's 18 years old. And then they sexually mutilate them as if that makes it better somehow. Um, as if it makes it okay. As long as you wait till 18, then you can sexually mutilate a confused person. I, I, I'm of the opinion that it's, it's not okay to sexually mutilate anyone of any age. You know, if you, have, if you have someone who's confused and mentally ill, uh, to, to mutilate them is a really terrible thing, no matter what, how old they are. But uh, even in the cases where they're not doing the actual surgeries, they still are providing the drugs. Okay? Um, and that, when we talk about chemical, we talk about castration of children. We're talking, most of the time, about the drugs they give them. So they might not be using a scalpel to do it, but they are doing it. When we talk about uh, kids being sterilized, again, in most cases, they're not using surgical instruments to do it. They're using drugs, but it is happening. It's, it is a physical thing that is happening to these kids. Yes, kids are being physically castrated. Um, 
in the name of gender transition, this is happening to, to minors, this is happening to prepubescent children, they use drugs, they use drugs like Lupron, chemical castration drug. And so th that's, that's the word you have to look for in the, in the, the denial. So we're not, we're not doing that surgically. Oh, we're just doing it with drugs, not surgery. Okay. It's still horrifically, it's still horrific. It's still a, a physical and sexual abuse of a child. The, the uh, effect on the child is oftentimes still permanent. Uh, another thing you hear in the denial is that they're, they're following uh, standards of uh, the, the, the universally accepted standards of care and practices, and they're doing what all the other... So these, every medical organization points to every other medical organization says, well, we're just doing what they're doing. This is, this is what we're all doing. It's, 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 this is normal. These are standard practices. What they don't tell you is that the uh, standards of care, if we can even call it that, these are standards that are invented by... Uh, trans, by left-wing trans extremists in organizations like WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. is an extremist organization whose, whose only goal is to promote gender ideology, and they come up with the standards, standards that keep uh, expanding. You know, with each new, with each, each new standard of care that they publish, they drop the ages where they recommend uh, all these various medical and surgical interventions. And that's, you know, that's a trajectory. But that's what they're basing it on. Now, what about toddlers? Um, are these medical institutions performing gender transition surgeries on toddlers? No, not yet anyway. Are they giving drugs to toddlers? No, again, not yet. Does that mean that they're not transitioning toddlers? No, that's not what it means. They're still doing it. They're still transitioning toddlers. But they're doing what they would call a social transition. So when you, when you bring a, a, a three-year-old into the you know, counselor, bring him to the gender clinic, say, oh, a three-year-old has a gender dysphoria. My son plays with Barbies and says he's a girl. They will, yes, they will start the transition of that three-year-old boy Right then and there, that is a fact. They will that that, that is happening all over the place. It, that that is part of the standard of care. It's just that they don't use drugs or surgery yet. What they do instead is they put them on the path to those things a little bit later down the line. They start the social transition, and they will start that very young. Okay, and they will tell you this: the social transition start is at any time. The kid's still a baby; you can start it. You start the social transition, you put them, and that's, that's when you, they're on the conveyor belt now, okay? They're on the gender ideology conveyor belt, and the, uh, the, the mutilation happens, like, down here. They're on the conveyor belt, and they're getting fed into this machine that's going to chew them up and spit them out. But because they haven't made it to the machine yet, they can say, what are you talking about? We're not doing that to kids. We're only, we're only putting them on the path so that it will happen to them. No, we're not castrating three-year-olds. We're just putting them on, on this path so that they will be castrated. That's it. This is misinformation. So the, the, the claims are, for those reasons, actually true. All right, before we get to the comment section, here's a, 